Hello, everyone. Um, so I didn't get to this last uh, level. There wasn't any time uh, in class. So I wanted to do one level from the XXE uh, set of exercises. And uh, the one I'm going to do is this um, uh, XXE uh, via file upload. Um, because uh, one of the things with this particular level is that it requires you to submit a multi-part form that has both regular form data and uh, data from a file that you're uploading onto the site. And in particular, it's going to be an avatar image uh, that you'll both, you'll upload your comment data and your avatar data in one single form submission. And that's done through something called a multi-part form, which um, maybe if you take the full stack web development course, you'll come across, but this is not something that um, I really want to get too deep uh, into in this particular class. Uh, so I do want to give you the syntax for this in Python so that you can uh, programmatically interact with this level uh, without a problem, just like you've been doing with your other levels, hopefully. Okay. So let me get to this uh, vulnerability. So one of the things with um, XML is that it's being used underneath in a lot of other document formats. And in particular, the SVG format, this is the scalable vector graphics file format, uh, which allows you to specify basically drawings that can scale up and down uh, without pixelization. Uh, so this is this is the, uh, the file format that's being used for a lot of icons. Uh, just for you know this compactness and the ability to scale to, to different resolutions. Um, and that's what this format is and it's based on XML. And so if this SVG file has an external entity include uh, and uh, the parser on the back end of the uh, the web server that you're uploading this thing to has a parser that will allow that include, then if you do something like um, put a local file include in there or put a SSRF uh, exploit in there, then you can actually get the external entity to be included in the response that you get back. And that's, that's how you exploit this particular lab. And so this particular site allows you to attach an avatar uh, to any of the comments that you upload uh, to the site. Uh, and then it uses some uh, processing library to turn that avatar. You upload an SVG file, and then it calls into this library to convert the SVG file into a PNG file, like so uh, a portable network graphics file with a different uh, image format. And uh, if you upload an SVG file that has an XXE that attempts to get the uh, contents of this particular file, this hostname file in it, then when the SVG is rendered and then, uh, well, when this library renders it, it can basically include the contents of whatever that XXE has included into the image that it then spits out. And that's what we're gonna show uh, in this particular lab. And by doing, so it asks you to exfiltrate this host name so that you can then access, the, so you upload something that will exfiltrate the host name, and then you will then subsequently uh, revisit the post and then see that image uh, in, the, in the avatar images that you have uploaded. So that's the idea. So we'll uh, uh, instantiate the lab. Um, so this is basically the, the main site, and you can see it's got a bunch of uh, blog posts. Uh, so there's there's five of them. So we'll go to. Um, I've already been interacting with this one. So we'll we'll go through the first post, and then uh, when you look at the first post, uh, you can scroll down and you can see that there's a comment form, uh, and you can see I already left one comment uh, already. But uh, you can see that there is a comment form, and it's got the traditional form parameters. Uh, the website, the email, the name, and the comment, but it also allows you to attach an avatar as a file that you choose from the local file system. So we're going to take a look at what this uh, uh, form uh, does. So we'll inspect this form, and uh, you can see this is the, the route that handles the post request. Uh, it is a post, and uh, it's got a different encoding type. So we, in our traditional one-part form, 
Uh, it's either URL encoded, which has been the, which was the first form I showed you, or it could be a JSON that it accepts, which is second kind of form submission. In this case, because we're, we're uh, uploading both the comments uh, in a form as well as an image, there needs to be multiple parts of your form submission to separate those two things out. And so you'll see uh, multi, uh, this multi-part form data is a thing in, in, in the HTML form uh, spec. Uh, and it's got several things in it. It's got the CSERP token, as we've seen before. It's got a hidden field that says, well, which post does this form, uh, do, does this comment get posted into? And so you can see that, you know, this is just a generic uh, uh, comment posting URI, and then you give it which post ID to route your comment submission to. And then you have your standard form fields, the actual comment, the name, the email, and the website. Uh, but then when you see this avatar uh, part of the form, you can see that the type uh, is not text. Uh, it's not email. It's not any of the other ones. It's actually a file type. And as a result of taking this in as part of its form, you have to do a multi-part uh, you have to de uh, define a multi-part form because you're doing both. And that's what this is doing. Okay, so that's the, the form submission itself. Uh, so I wanna go ahead and leave a, a form submission. So, uh, well, I'll give it hello to. And then uh, I'm going to choose an avatar. And so uh, one of the things that we want to do is uh, uh, see what is in this avatar. Um, so what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll choose a file. And in my file system, I have this image uh, file. So uh, one of the things I want to do is I want to take a look at what this uh, image file is. So I'm going to get back into the file system, actually, uh, and show you what I upload uh, before I upload it. And so this is my image over here. Um, and so I'm gonna open it with a notepad. And then you're gonna see uh, in this notepad, so this is what it looks like. Uh, and let me, get the, um, let me get the text in front of you so that you're not you know, seeing all these different things. So this is the SVG file. And you can see it defines XML, the version. Um, it says, uh, I'm gonna give you an SVG. And these are the dimensions of it. Uh, and then this is the um, sort of the, the, the DTD, I guess you might uh, say of the, of the SVG format that I'm using. So it's from 2000. Um, and then I'm just gonna uh, define some text that's basically my name, right? And uh, it gives you the font size uh, and everything. So that's, that's the file. And I can actually open this in a browser. So, um, don't want to save this. If I open this uh, with Chrome, uh, you can see my name shows up. And so this is the image file format. So that's what I'm going to upload. Uh, so um, let's go back into this form. Um, I'm going to choose the image file I just showed you uh, to upload this thing. Uh, I'm going to uh, put my email address in there. I'm going to say, that's my website URL. And actually, I'm going to keep the developer tools up. Uh, and then I'm going to submit this thing. I'm going to post this comment. And it's going to say, thank you for your comment. I'm going to inspect the, uh, the requests here. And so for the, the networking request, you can see, oh, this is the comment uh, that I posted. Uh, the thing I want you to pay attention to is um, the content type. Because we're posting a multi-part form, the way this is encoded is to say, this is a multi-part form da data submission. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to post you multiple parts. And the parts are going to be separated by this. So this is a special uh, delimiter that delimits the different parts of the multi-part form submission. And then you can see in the payload that uh, first the form fields are given. And then you get the boundary. Uh, this boundary pattern separates that between the actual SVG file, uh, which follows it. Okay, so that's um, that is the form submission. Uh, so one of the things that we want you to do uh, that I, I'd like you to do first is to write a Python program that performs that submission for you. Oh, actually, before we do that, let's go back to see our comment. 
and to see exactly uh, what shows up in the avatar. So I'm going to go back to the blog. Um, and so you can see this is the second um, post that I've done. And so if I um, uh, open this image in a new tab, I can actually see that uh, an image, and you see the image uh, file name is equal to 2.png, you can see that uh, a, a PNG has been created out of the SVG that's just got an, an Im a pixel image of uh, my name. Now, if you were to put an XXE in that uh, uh, SVG file, then you might be able to exfiltrate arbitrary data. Uh, and that's like, if you say, um, XXE and then file include the Etsy host name, then you would get the host name of the machine that this is on, and then you'd solve the level. Uh, so you could do that manually if you wanted to, uh, but you know I just want to show you how to do this programmatically because I think it's more fun, uh, and you learn more if you did this uh, if you're doing this in Python. So I just wanted to show you that. Um, so I have here the first script. Uh, and so what the script does, and maybe I'll use, I was using post ID one, so maybe I'll use post ID two. Um, I want to show you how to upload a comment using a multi-part form using Python requests. Uh, so as before, I'm going to have a site here that's defined. And so I have this site um, as my site. So I'm going to paste that in here. So that's my site. Uh, again, uh, my post URL, this is the URL that's got the post after I post it. And that's, uh, we're specifying post ID too. Uh, and then we're gonna get this post uh, in order to get the CSERF token out of it. So that's what this thing does. And then I'm gonna submit a comment. And we saw earlier in the form that the, the path to submit the comment is slash post slash comment. And then in Python requests, it gives you a really natural way of, well, I guess it, it is a way. I'm not going to call it natural. Um, it's, a, it's a way of specifying multi-part form data. And you do it as a tuple. So you'll say, oh, this is what's relevant for the first part of the form. And this is what's relevant for the second part of the form. And so uh, in the first part, you're basically specifying um, in this case, the actual image itself. And so that's that's why for, for uh, the first half of this multi-part form, you're saying, oh, uh, the file that you want to upload is going to be named this. And then you're going to provide the contents in the local file directory of image.svg. And that's this thing sitting here on the file system. Uh, so this thing has to be run in the same directory as the SVG uh, in your uh, program. And as it turns out, you know, uh, this is on Repolit. And so as it turns out, I have to actually put image.svg in the same file system in the same directory as the program that I'm running it in. So we can go back here into the shell. And I've already placed this uh, in, in this uh, Repolit already. You can see that when I cat image.svg, uh, it's got that, that same SVG I so showed you before. Um, and that's what it's, it's actually going to read it from, from this uh, part of the file system uh, in, in Repolit. Okay, uh, and so I'm going to pull this CSR, uh, CSERF token here as part of the first part of the form. The post ID I'm going to post to is, is post ID 2. So those are the first two hidden fields I saw. This is the comment I'm going to uh, uh, submit. This is my name. This is my email. It's my website. And then uh, I just mentioned the avatar. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to post this. And uh, I'm going to say the files is equal to the multi-part form data. And it's going to submit all of this. And then it's going to do the form submission. And this is the kind of this is the stuff I didn't want you to tinker with. <laughs> so that's why I'm doing this walkthrough. So you can just use it on your own. I mean, if, you, if you're really confident in Python requests and you already know what you're doing, then yeah, you won't need this. But I think most of you uh, might need this. Uh, so I'm going to try this out. I'm going to actually run this thing. Uh, and it's going to install all the packages.
and it's running. I, so I don't print anything on this, on this particular one. But when I go back and I go to post ID number two uh, in the browser, uh, this is what you'll see, uh, a guide to on online dating. And then you'll see in the comments, the comment that I submitted. A uh, nice blog, be ashamed if something happened to it. You see my URL is there. And then you can see, again, this image has been rendered, uh, which is now 3.png because it's, it's, it's numbering the images sequentially. OK, uh, so that is our initial script uh, and our initial file. Uh, the next thing I want to do is get into the actual vulnerability. Uh, uh, and so this, uh, well, actually, the so there is an, uh, there, I'll first go through to the SVG. Um, so in this, uh, in this REPLit, I've got a, an SVG file. Um, let me see if I can make this bigger. Uh, and if you look at this, I define a tag. Um, Uh, let me let me do some light editing here, uh, just so that you can see this better. Um, sorry, I didn't uh, I didn't make this really nice to look at, which I I mean I could have easily done this uh, ahead of time. But uh, and this is the canonical XXE vulnerability where I say you know what include the contents of some local file. This could have been the password file, but in this case we're just exfiltrating the host name. Uh, if this allowed uh, external requests, I could have specified a URL that poked into the private network of the back end and, and exfiltrated that. And then uh, in, the, uh, in the contents here, I have the XXE. Uh, I define the element, the external, external entity. And then I'll be able to get the host name included in this image. So the parser is going to, to render this, this document and it's going to go into Etsy host name, get the host name in there, and then a pack, that Apache uh, package will convert that into a PNG. But that PNG, as its avatar, will now have the host name uh, inside of it. Uh, so that's the that's the vulnerability. Um, and so let's go back to the program. Uh, I'm going to talk about all of this stuff in a bit, but uh, again, post ID number two. Uh, I'm going to post this comment, and this is all the same as before. I get the CSERF token. I go to the, the, the comment site. I uh, upload this thing again, and then instead of the um, instead of the other one that just had my name in it, this has got the XXE payload. Then I'm going to post this thing, and then uh, I am going to then well, we can do this manually, actually. So what I'll do is I'll just exit here. Um, well, so what this piece of code does is it gets the the post, and then it tries to pull out the uh, the link to your avatar, and then it prints the avatar URL. Um, so you could do that, but what I'm going to do, I'm just going to manually execute this because I already put something on post ID two that wasn't what we were looking for. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to just exit here, and then we'll manually inspect this after after we're done. So I'll I'll run. Oh wait, I need to put the site in there. Uh, so let me let me now uh, put this site in here. And I will run this. And it'll install. It'll install a bunch of packages. Some of it won't won't actually be installable, actually. Uh, and then we'll. Um, it exited. So when it when you do an exit, it it dies unexpectedly. But then I'll go back to the blog post. Uh, I'll reload this thing, and then you'll see uh, right here at the, uh, the. This is the comment that I posted. Um, and then if I whoops if I open this image in a, in a new tab, you can see. And then this is actually the solution that you would submit to solve the level. Um, and so you could do that. Uh, one of the things that I like doing is see if I can uh, get the thing to automatically submit. And for that, uh, I have written a little Python script. So this is a, this is a, um, a script 
that will basically pull the avatar URL and use PyTesseract to do an OCR uh, image uh, character recognition from that image and then figure out what the host name is and then programmatically submit the solution. And so that's the, the rest of this script I wanna, I wanna go through. Um, and so just for fun, um, uh, if you look at here, um, I have this pillow uh, image, PIL, uh, PIL package, which is a way, it's a Python image library. And this is very common. If you're handling images in Python, uh, you want to use this package to basically create image, to create a structured image uh, based on bytes that you read in from the file system. That's what the, uh, this will do. This will do. And then in this package, you can go from uh, image uh, format to image format. So if you ever are in this situation where you do want to convert between images, uh, this is your package. And then uh, I want to do, so what, what's going to happen is I'm going to download the PNG file that, that uh, my avatar is stored in because it's got the host name in it. But again, it's stored as pixels, right? Uh, it, pixels in a PNG, it's not in a structured format. Uh, so I need to do OCR on that, uh, optical character recognition. And so for that, I'm going to use uh, the, the PyTesseract. And this is just a package that will do the, um, uh, the, the sort of the OCR for me. And uh, so the rest of the program uh, basically, uh, so the first thing that happens, you have to give PyTesseract uh, an image. And so I'll use the pillow, uh, well, the pillow package or the PIL package to open the, uh, the, the results of doing a request.get of the avatar and then pulling out its content. So request.get will give you a response object. And in the response object, you just want the raw content of the response. And this will get you just the raw PNG and you create an image out of that. And then you send that over to PyTesseract and within PyTesseract, you get this image to string method that will then give you the host name out of it. Okay, and then once you're given the host name, you can say, oh, uh, I am going to then submit that host name uh, as the solution and solve the level. Now, um, I can't show you this on Repl.it because uh, in order for PyTesseract to actually work, it needs the Tesseract package uh, to be installed, the Tesseract OCR package to be installed on the server that it's running on. And uh, I don't have the ability to apt install uh, uh, Tesseract OCR on Repl.it. Uh, so I'm going to show you a demo of this using um, basically my uh, uh, just a local uh, instantiation of this. So that's what I'm going to do next. And so um, I have a, a session here on Mashimaro, which is my server here. I've installed. Um, so this is the same program, or largely the same program. Um, I've done the uh, the Tesseract. I've installed this locally. I've installed the Python binding. So uh, this is just a generic. This is all of the actual code that implements the OCR. And then this is just the Python binding that allows you to interact with that thing to do the OCR. So I have that all set up uh, on this machine. And um, again, like before, I still have my uh, my host name. Uh, I'm going to use host uh, post ID number three because um, I don't want the OCR to happen on any of the stuff I just submitted on the other two posts. Uh, I want to actually show it on a, a, a different one, on, a, on one that hasn't seen a post yet. So again, I just modify this to be post ID three and everything else is, is similar. And again, for the SVG file uh, locally, I have this SVG uh, that's going to be sent. And uh, this SVG uh, is what you saw before, where the XXE entity is here, and it's basically going to ask uh, to exfiltrate the host name. Uh, and so that's basically what gets uploaded. So then I post this onto post ID 3. And then I uh, parse, I go back to that post URL uh, uh, number 3. And then I parse the result to get the image tag in order to pull off the avatar image that's got the uh, host name uh, encoded in it. And uh, I get the URL. So this is the URL. And then again, I uh, get the content of that URL 
turn it into a bytes object and then convert it into an image or, or read it in as an image in the, in the pill package. I get the host name, I exfiltrate it, and then uh, I'll pause right here and then hit return to submit the solution. And then I'll, I'll submit the solution and solve the level. And so this Python script will from beginning to end uh, run the uh, solve the level. So that's what I'm going to do now. Um, and so you can uh, you see it's connecting. Uh, the thing that it uh, gets is uh, this is the avatar uh, URL that I um, I printed out. And so it, it sees that the avatar that I got is 5.png. And then it parses the, uh, the host name out of that. And then I can just programmatically submit this. Uh, hang on a second as I get the website up. Uh, for doing that. Uh, I want to back to the lab home so that when this thing is solved, uh, you will see the thing get updated. All right, so then uh, that solves the level. And uh, I think that'll be it for this level. Um,